Hello and welcome to MTM Vegas. Crazy crowds everywhere last weekend, this weekend coming up. Things are opening, travel's heating up. We'll talk about March Madness, some places to see March Madness, how even Circa's opening up unfinished ballrooms to bring in the masses. Crazy stuff happening in Vegas. And I'll recap my anniversary staycation where we stayed at Circa. I'll tell you what I think of those rooms and how they compare to other offerings. Was it as good as I expected? And we also talk about when Encore, we stayed at Encore as well. And I just wanna say, that's the best hotel in Vegas. Find out why. If you like this show, please smash the thumbs up button, help us out, subscribe to the channel, tell people about us, and more importantly, leave a comment. Mark and I love to discuss this stuff with you in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Let's hit it. So Mark, it's been all over. The the crowds have been crazy. Vegas is coming back. March Madness is coming. I know we're going to talk about all of that a, a little bit later, but we got to stay on the strip in downtown this past week for our anniversary. We'll talk about that too, but it's good to see Vegas kind of coming back with this energy, with these crowds like we haven't seen since last February, March. Yeah, I thought it was pretty busy when I was there a couple of weeks back, but seeing the pictures and stuff on Twitter and, you know, the videos and everything, it was it was insane this past weekend. And then with them up, upping everything to 50%, I'm, it's just going to get even crazier. And I predicted that this weekend, first weekend of March, March Madness is going to be bigger than a normal weekend of March Madness. I think everybody's going to come out like they're just going to flock to it, thinking 50%, some people have vaccines and everything. They're just it, they're ready to let loose. So maybe you need to do like a midnight walking around Saturday, Saturday night video or something. Well, to speak, speak to that, I'll tease this a little bit. We did, Jasmine and I did walk down Fremont Street at midnight all the way, way, way past where the tourists normally would go, way past your container park, way down until we got to some really, uh, I don't want to say shady parts, but just, you know, parts where it was darker and you didn't really want to yeah. be walking. So that video is coming soon, but we started all the way at Circa and walked all the way down and then came back, caught the 1 a.m. show on Fremont Street Experience. So I think it'll be a good video and people will get to see some of that really cool neon that they've restored all throughout East Fremont and you know see that it's not quite as scary as maybe people think if they leave Fremont Street Experience. So I can't wait to share that uh, with everybody. <laughs> and then yes, I think midnight on the strip, midnight uh, on a Saturday night would be a good video uh, coming up with so many people here and I don't think you're wrong. I, I think that March Madness could be bigger than normal uh, based on what we've seen with the crowds uh, all over Twitter this past weekend. Even the national news picked it up talking about the crowds coming to Vegas. I took Ellie out to, to Hoover Dam, which is, you know, kind of a, it's busy, but, you know, normally busy, but it's, there's no tours right now. So you wouldn't expect there to be a lot of tourists there. And it was packed, absolutely packed, all out of state license plates. So we're getting bombarded with people flying in, driving in. You know, Vegas is such a huge destination and everybody wants to come, it seems like. Yeah, a lot of the people I ran into when I was there were from California and stuff. And they were just, we can't do anything at home. So we came here for the weekend. So it doesn't surprise me. And it's just going to get, I think everybody has pent up. And that's why I said, I don't know if I'm going to go to Vegas at all this summer. Because I think it's just going to be nuts of people coming in flo uh, floodgates opening in Vegas. So it'll be interesting to see. I don't know. All right. Well, let's talk about our staycation for our anniversary because we stayed at Circa and we stayed at uh, Encore at Wynn. Both really great stays. But I finally got to check out the rooms at Circa and I'll have a video coming soon. But they are about what I expected. I know you shared some pictures with me and the views looked awesome that you were getting. You could even watch the game on the, the big TV above the pool from your room and everything. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, we were on the 31st floor, so about halfway up, a little bit over halfway up the tower, so not the tallest uh, view, but we were going to do Legacy Club, which we'll talk about later, so that gave us those views from the top, so that was good. And I booked the cheapest room, $119, plus the resort fees, $30, and then tax, of course. And I asked simply just for a nicer view, and actually Jasmine checked in, and she asked for the nicer view, so, uh, and they did that for us. So no upgraded room as far as the room itself, but the view was upgraded. The room is really good. I'd say it's pretty solid mid-tier, mid to upper tier. It's certainly not a luxury hotel room in any way, um, but that's not bad. I don't want anybody to think I'm criticizing. I feel like this is a new room, has lots of tech, 
The materials are really nice. The decor is really attractive. Um, you're not going to find like solid woods like you would in some kind of five-star hotels, but it's just below that as far as, I'd say kind of like maybe on, on par with MGM Grand or maybe what Cromwell's trying to do. They're doing a little bit better at Circa. <laughs> Get my uh, my every episode oh, big dig. at Cromwell. <laughs> oh, so yeah, deep. overall, really liked the room and uh, the bathroom had a big shower and the decor is very Vegas. So if you like Vegas, if you're into that, you know, the history of Vegas and that sort of nostalgia that they're selling at Circa, the rooms are very good and definitely a step up over most everything else on Fremont. I'd say probably on par with Golden Nugget. And I can't wait to try out the new tower at Downtown Grand, the gallery tower, to see how it compares because I feel like it might be comparable uh, there as well. Yeah, I've seen it at the Nugget a few times, and I really, I really do love that property. If you get the the newer tower, the the older tower, it's like your grandma's room, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. So you don't want to stay there, but the newer tower, the, I think it's like the Rush Tower or something like that. Super beautiful rooms. I haven't stayed there in, in probably like seven, eight years, but when I did stay there, and I've stayed in the Spa Tower Suite uh, a couple nights before, which is an amazing room. Is it that was, the two story was, one? Yeah, the two story yeah. with like a spiral staircase walking through. I'll send you some pictures so you can you can put them up. But um, that was an amazing room, and there was just like a deal going on that was two hundred and fifty dollars. We went to we we were staying somewhere else, but we wanted to go through the the water slide through the sharks and stuff, and check out the pool. So we're like, hey, how much is your cheapest room? Just so we can drop our stuff off. She's like, oh, it's forty nine dollars, and I saw the picture of the two story suite. I was like, well, just curious, how much is that? Expecting like $800, $900. And she's like, it's on special for like 249 bucks tonight. I was like, uh, done. Book it. Give it give it to me for a couple. And we kept extending it every you night. You should have so negotiated, though. You should have been like, <laughs> no, I'll give you 200 We never went back to the old uh, hotel. We just went back and picked up our stuff and, <laughs> and left it, which we weren't spending any money there. So it wasn't a big deal. But it was an awesome experience. Um, probably the coolest room I've stayed in anywhere. So I do like that. And if Circa's on that same level, then I think it's it's good. And I do like that all throughout Circa, you're seeing the throwback to the nostalgic Vegas, the old school Vegas. I think they did that really well. And that's one of the cooler things about it. Even like when you pull in, uh, where cars pull in, there's the old light bulbs everywhere that, you know, give you that vibe. So something that's been missing from Vegas. But yeah, if the room's got that same vibe, then I think they did a good job with it. Yeah, for sure. The artwork in the room does, the even the wallpaper in the bathroom. And we'll have the full video so people can see it. Uh, after checking the room, of course, we went down to Stadium Swim. The weather didn't cooperate with our stay. Like, it dipped like 30 degrees for the time we were staying. It was like in the 40s compared to the 70s just a few days before that. And we got out to Stadium Swim, got in the water because the weather was looking a little weird. Got in the water, not even in the water a minute. They come and say, you got to get out because of lightning. But then an unexpected surprise happened. They said there was only maybe 20, 25 people in the entire pool area because of the weather. And they said, go ahead and pick a cabana, enjoy the cabana while you're waiting to get to, for the lightning to pass. And so the Golden Knights game was on stadium swim screen. Uh, we had the, the private TV in our cabana and Jasmine and I had our own cabana free of charge until the weather subsided. Then we got in the pool and we were in there for about 20 minutes and then the lightning came back. And so we got about 20 minutes of swim time total. And it was freezing cold in the 40s, but the pool was fine and, you know, it was warm enough and just the atmosphere out there, even in the crazy weather was good. They did nail down these, uh, a lot of the uh, furniture there. It's all weighted oh, down with sand and stuff. Go. Yeah, I maybe checked they, it because the they, wind. Maybe they did it with the fire pits up in the Legacy Club too <laughs> because of our, our mishap. Yeah, the wind was crazy, like as bad as in those videos where you saw everything flying. And I'll throw some video up here too. But everything was heavy and weighed down, and so they clearly fixed that issue. And thanks to them for allowing not just us, but everybody out there to get a cabana, to stay dry out of the rain, to still enjoy the big TV and everything else that was going on there. And so that was enjoyable. The other part of it was I, Legacy now Club. I have, a, I have a quick question about the pool. One, so that all I'm hearing is, you know, look at the weather, and if there's a, a chance of a lightning storm, go to the pool and try to get a free cabana. But two... <laughs> Um, is, is entry, cause normally you pay $10 to enter. If you're staying at the hotel, is the entry free then? Is it covered as a part of your room? Yeah, it is covered as part of your room. And all you have to do is show your room key and you go down there and then they will give you a receipt just like you, as if you had paid and they'll stamp your hand just as if you had paid. And that will serve you for you to come in and out the rest of the day. So basically it just comps your ticket 
uh, to get in. And uh, we've covered Stadium Swim a lot, and it's you know it wasn't any different. We didn't get to enjoy it enough. I wish that, of course, this, the weather was better, but it was nice out there. The other thing about the weather is it blew everything around, and it was so bad that when we went up to Legacy Club, the outdoor patio that you had covered so nicely on a previous show was closed, but we spent a lot of time indoors, and it wasn't uh, busy, so I got some great shots of it. And the indoor section there is beautiful. And, of course, they have that $1.7 million in gold bars, uh, which I don't know if you checked that out, but uh, kind of gives I you did. that yep. good sub it's for Indians, cool. which took away their million dollars. So it was nice to, to do all that. And Jasmine got the Legacy Club drink, which was 18 bucks, their signature drink, which she, which she liked. I got a Diet Coke, and we sat up there for, for <laughs> a They were like, get this guy out of here already. <laughs> <laughs> buzzkill, buzzkill. It was really we need, quiet. We need $20 there. drinks in here. We need you to spend the 20 bucks, But... I'm just happy of the two of us that I'm the only one that's been out on the patio, you know, because we like to play that game. So you still got to <laughs> wait another until your next trip. There you go. Yeah, it's it's so far away, Mark. I guess I'll just have to wait until uh, <laughs> I, I go up there. Yeah, you the might. Patio does I look mean, great, though. You want to have a Diet Coke by the fire pit. That's the way to do it. Yeah. And it looks like an amazing place for sunset. I know they charge for that, but uh, just the way it's all set up, it looks amazing. Of course, with all the clouds on our day, there was no real sunset that you could see but overall had a good experience there nice being on fremont street we didn't uh, it was our first night of our staycation we didn't want to eat anywhere fancy so we kind of just snacked we had a, a later on in the night on our midnight walk we had a coney dog over at the d we ate at victory burger detroit at baby circa. yeah we ate at victory burger at circa like snacked on the nachos there overlooking the sports book and yeah everything was great there the next night we went to encore I stayed at Wynn earlier this year. Now I did Encore, so I'll be able to combine those into one video. And I just have to say, I don't want to spend too much time on it because we're going long here, but Encore Wynn is by far the best hotel in Las Vegas. The way that they handle service, the resort is the most complete in Vegas. And I just don't, you know, I, I only thing I can say is that when I stay there, and I've only stayed there, you know, a couple nights and there's single nights, I just don't want to leave. I, I get that four o'clock checkout with American Express, find hotels and resorts, and I stay all the way till four because I enjoy the room. <laughs> I enjoy just sort of walking around. And it's the kind of place that it's in Vegas, though. But if I was coming out of town to stay there, I don't think I would ever leave. It has everything. And I, I don't even care what's going on beyond the doors. I'm kind of surprised to hear you say that more than Cosmo because I know you love Cosmo. So I'm kind of surprised to hear you say that it's far and away better, better than Cosmo. Well, Wynn has so much more space and it's just more of a full resort. Cosmo was built on a tiny piece of land and it's kind of catering to more of a different demographic. I think if you're more into the party atmosphere, Cosmo because of its location and then just its whole atmosphere and vibe and the clientele and everything else is is better. If you're looking for a luxury resort experience, uh, Wynn is a world-class property, not just for Vegas, but for just anywhere. They, they know how to do it well. They know how to do it right. And... The win on the best of, is great. If you're w looking for the best of both worlds, Cromwell, that's where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, yeah, it was overall, it was great. I got lots of footage. I can't wait to that midnight on Fremont Street was a fun video and uh, film Circa and the, the wind video uh, coming soon. But overall, just a great couple nights on the strip. We also got to eat at Peppermill. So that was my first time at Peppermill since COVID oh, started. Love it. And they got the plexiglass up between the, the booths so they can keep everything open. And is the, was, the Fireside Lounge open too right now? I think, yeah, it is open. I didn't, we didn't go in there, but uh, it was open. Everything capacity restricted, of course. But in the restaurant section, because if you've ever been in there, and I know Mark, you have, but if anybody out there has been there, it's very tight in there. So the plexiglass helps them do that. But Still felt like the same vibe, very busy in there, and uh, they're surviving pretty well. Every time I've been by there, there's people waiting. We had to wait like 30, 40 minutes. I actually used that time to go film Resorts World, all the new construction for the construction video. So I got tons of footage I have to, I have to process here, but Resorts World's coming along really well too. I mean, it's progressed quite a lot. And so that whole area is gonna be really cool here in just a couple months as they finish up all the construction, the road, everything else. It's a mess right now on the North Strip though. So if you can avoid the North Strip for driving or anything else until uh, this project is done in the next couple of months, I would recommend it because it's down to one lane in spots. The road is terrible. Good to see Pepper Mill. Good to see Wynn, Circa. That is Vegas at its best. I feel like if people hate Vegas, all the people that comment saying they hate Vegas, if they could just spend a day with me going to places like Circa, Pepper Mill and Win, I think that they would leave loving this town and understanding something a little bit different than they've ever seen before. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a good mix of luxury as well as budget. <laughs> yeah. Cover mill, huge, huge portions for a good price, good food. Oh, yeah. Especially. I mean, the prices have creeped the up over the years. The, yeah. the prices have creeped up, but so you're looking at 20 bucks a head for an entree or a sandwich or whatever. But like you said, the portions are huge and you have the history Breakfast of that. Breakfast at building. 4 a.m. Yeah. That's where yeah. you go. I have never met somebody who doesn't like pepper mill. And if I do meet that person someday, I will totally judge them, Mark. I will totally <laughs> judge them. All right, let's let's move on uh, to talk a little bit more about March Madness. Circa, uh, Derek Stevens had kind of uh, teased that they were going to open up some sort of a, a venue for March Madness. And he actually on Twitter revealed what it was. And it is their ballroom, it looks like, but it's not finished. Like it's half finished. It's like a basement. <laughs> yeah. But they're opening it up for free, so they're not charging people. So it's not like they're making people pay. I think this is great. They have big TVs set up in there, and we kind of get a sneak peek of what that third floor of Circa is going to look like with all of their convention space that will eventually be built out. They, of course, put that on the back burner with COVID, knowing they wouldn't need it right away, which is why it's not finished. Yeah, I mean, everybody's been doing this for years and years where they open up their ballroom and put, you know, blackjack tables in there, put betting booths in there, put other tables... Normally, they'll charge you a fee, and then it includes drinks and everything. So it's cool that they're not charging a fee, but, I mean, it's nothing earth-shattering or new, but it is nice to have that space, you know, for the overflow of people because it gets so busy. The first weekend of March Madness is always crazy. You know, besides the Super Bowl, maybe it, it, it's the busiest weekend of, of the year, so they definitely will need the space, and I'm sure it will be used. Yeah, and in future years, I'm sure it'll all be finished, and they'll have better events, and not just Circa, pretty much... All the major hotels will have something going on for watch parties or to accommodate people in some way. So check that out if you're if you're going to be in town. Speaking of that, Eater Vegas Eater had a great article: twenty two great sports bars to watch March Madness in. And I know we went over there. Number one on that list, Mark, is Big Dogs Brewing Company on North Rancho. That is a old school Green Bay Packers bar here in town. They're a brewery Boo. too. They have really good really good Boo. beer. Okay. And, Yay. Uh, <laughs> so yeah it's a it's a cool place it's a little far from the strip but i was glad to see that on there i know you're very uh happy that ellis island's front yard is on there anything else yes. stick out to you i i thought it was weird that they had yard house on there which is in the link promenade um I, I love yard house but it's a chain so it doesn't really feel like that vibe that you would want to go for a march madness thing you know they have a lot of beer on tap a lot of options the food's pretty good but it, it's everywhere, so I was kind of surprised to see that one. And then the other one was Barcode Burger Bar, which we have we actually had an event um, at for Miles to Memories for the website, and that's where we went after to have uh, some hors d'oeuvres and, and drinks and everything, and everybody just chatted and everything, and they set it up, and it was great. The food was good. It's a cool little bar. It's, you know, off the strip and everything, but I know a lot of locals go there for uh, the Vegas nights to watch games and everything, so... Decent food, good prices. Uh, so That'd that be was the nice golden nights, Mark. Okay, the golden nights. <laughs> what I said, well, not just the night. You said the nights. <laughs> oh, sorry. Because <laughs> although we have, we will sorry. have, we have the silver nights too. So you know, we got two. Different okay, nights. golden nights, golden nights. My my apologies. And then uh, the Anchor Pub is um, one that they're, they're what is there like four or five locations in Vegas, something like that. Crown and Anchor. I know they have a couple. I don't know the exact number, but yeah, they're really old school. Been here quite a while. Yeah, and I know you, you said their fish and chips is good, and I, I swear that I've read in the past, I don't know if it's still going on, but they used to, like, if you went in for lunch and played $20 in uh, video poker, you'd get a free lunch, something like that, so that was always a popular spot for people coming into town, so check out and see if that's still going on, or let us know in the comments if it's not, or or if I'm totally off base, but I'm pretty sure that's that used to be a thing. Yeah, I seem to remember something like that, too, and I can't place it in my head, but I think you're right. So yeah, really good things happening here in Vegas for March Madness. Like the vibe is coming back, the energy is coming back, and uh, I, I sort of fear all of the crowds because it's been nice on one hand to like be on the strip without all the people, but I definitely am happy for everybody who relies on it and the entire city for just getting that semblance of normal and hoping by summer, you know, things should start picking up with conventions maybe and and not just the weekend business and the holiday business, but the, the kind of midweek business will allow restaurants to reopen. And, and uh, we will talk about that here next because guess what, Mark? A buffet is coming back to the Las Vegas Strip, kind of, sort of. Oh, uh, oh well. <laughs> well, not yeah, all the time. I expected. Expected. 
couple yeah. I, I still don't think all of them will come back i think there will be a lot that will stay shuttered but wicked spoon's one of the more known ones so i'm not surprised that that's that's coming back yeah but there is a caveat there because it is coming back and this was of course wicked spoon was one of a, i think it was just win buffet and wicked spoon that were the ones that opened during COVID. both of those had to close because they couldn't make the economics work they're coming back but only thursday through sunday and breakfast and lunch which is a little strange. I would have thought dinner would be a good, but obviously they crunched the numbers and figured out where they could make money. And like we said previous with Caesars, don't expect these casinos to open buffets unless they're going to be profitable. So uh, obviously yeah. they think they can Eggs make a profit. Cheap, that's why. <laughs> yeah, probably. And yeah, hopefully that doesn't mean they're cutting back, but you're probably right with dinner, with all like crab legs and stuff like that. Uh, maybe they figured that with lunch. They could do it. It's not cheap either. Breakfast, $38 for adults and lunch, $45 for adults. So uh, there's no way you can ever eat $38 worth of breakfast. I mean, you can go to Pepper Mill and have a huge breakfast and it'll cost you like $18 and you'll be full. So I don't know what kind of specialty they're bringing in (laughs) that makes it worth it. But I'm sure there'll be people that miss it. So and they'll do it. If you go to a fancy hotel in any other city uh, for a, for a weekend breakfast brunch, it'll be probably close to that. So yeah, but I mean, it's still not worth it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm probably not. And if you want to skip the line, Mark, don't forget they have a twenty dollar line pass too. So oh okay, and you can up that that you can make that thirty eight dollar breakfast fifty eight dollars if you don't want to wait <laughs> in line. But I'm glad to see them opening. Hopefully, we get other announcements for other buffets. The other thing we we learned is more shows are open as of now. Forty shows are back. And Cirque finally chimed in saying that they expect their shows, some of their shows to reopen this summer. And specifically, O and Mystere will be the first two that they are going to reopen. That would be O at Bellagio and Mystere at Treasure Island. So good to see that they are moving towards that. And these are big shows, so we should see announcements for other big shows as, again, we march towards somewhat of normalcy. And the last thing we're going to talk about, Mark, is Virgin Hotels Las Vegas. They're opening now uh, about nine days from now as we record this on the 25th of March. And we got some looks inside of it. Uh. And I was a little surprised. Yeah, we have to reserve judgment because Uh. they're just pictures of a few areas. But there's some leopard prints like carpeting and there's some weird colors. And it's certainly not a modern Uh. vibe. It's more tropical, maybe. I don't know. What do you think of it? Yeah. It was really weird. Like the the bar or restaurant area that they showed just looked like '80s wannabe aquarium, I guess, with bright colors and old school looking stuff, but not done in like not in a circa way that it's done well. So it just oh, I didn't like any of the pictures. Like I looked at all the, I think there's like four or five, and not one. I was like, oh okay, that looks good. So I hope it was just taken out of context, and it totally looks better when you get there. But a oh, man, it did not look good. Yeah, we both had the same thoughts. And again, we're gonna, I'm going to reserve judgment until I see it in person because sometimes when you see things in the whole context of what they're meant to be seen, uh, that they, they are better. So I don't want to trash it, but we'll throw this up on the screen. Vital Vegas is the one who had the pictures. And uh, let us know in the comments what you think about what it looks like. Are you a little scared or you uh, you like the look? I'm sure a lot of people will, will like it. Uh, maybe it's just not quite <laughs> our style, but let us know. And uh, we'll have much more of that <laughs> as they open up pretty soon but that's going to do it for this week's mtm vegas thanks so much for watching these videos subscribe to the channel give the video a thumbs up mark and i love to talk to you guys in the comments so feel free to leave a comment your favorite place to watch march madness what you think about circa or win about these crazy crowds and of course about what virgin hotels is going to look like anything else yes. mark and yeah i'm going to give a, sh- a shout out to uh one of the the watchers viewers Charlotte O'Connor, uh, she comments quite a bit, and she's a local. But I, the reason I really want to call her out is because uh, my daughter's first name is Charlotte, and my con, er, and my son's first name is Connor. So she knocked it out of the park with her name. Had both of them in there. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. So what's up, Charlotte? Thanks for uh, for watching and commenting, and it's always good to catch up with you. Thanks, Charlotte, and thanks to everybody out there who continues to comment, subscribe, watch the videos. And uh, for all the support, we love hearing from you. We love uh, doing this every single week. And thanks so much for watching. See you next time. See you next week.